So welcome guys to Wrestle Designs and in today's video it's all going to be about part 4 of my wagon racer which is my Mark 4 Golf. Alright so let's do a little recap on where we stand so far on this project. So I've fitted a set of coilovers, H&R coilovers. The car also runs um, H&R uh, anti-roll bars front and back. So moving on from that is now going to be focusing on the front end. Now with what I'm going to be doing which is going to be the TT front end. I'm going to show you this stuff's all off my track car again and some little bits and pieces here. So let's move over to the bench so I can show you guys what's going to be done today. All right, guys, so from left to right. So I've got these front adjustable uh, top mounts. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be fitting these on because obviously it is a daily driver. I don't want it to be super harsh. So I'm still debating if I should fit these or not these are the tt hubs which are different to the mark 4 hubs the standard uh, mark 4 hubs and i'll go into more detail once i've actually removed uh, the ones the standard ones off the car so you can see the differences and the benefits of actually using uh, these hubs obviously to go with these hubs you do need to use the tt wishbones now the tt wishbone doesn't have a location for the anti-roll bar like it does on the mark 4 setup which is here in the wishbone. That is because it actually uses a really long drop link and it, drop, and it actually goes onto the body of the Shook Absorber, which I'll sh put a picture up here so you can see. Now, like I said, I've got the H&R coilovers and they don't have that little lug, so I can put a drop link on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this, tap this as well as weld in a nut and actually adapt these so that I can actually use uh, the bigger hoop H&R front any roll bar. So it basically turns this into a plug and play. I don't have to mess around with it anymore. I've given them all a wire brushing down. I'm gonna give these now a lick of paint. And also while those, while I'm painting those and waiting for them to dry, the hubs anyway, I'm gonna uh, fit uh, these are 034 aluminum subframe bushes. And I'll show you why these are quite important. Because on the standard subframe, You've got four bolts and the two at the front bolt straight into the body. The two in the back go into a bush. That bush wears over time and literally almost can be pushed out almost. Uh, and you get a lot of movement in the subframe or in the chassis even because this subframe actually ties um, the front chassis legs together at the front of the car. So it is actually quite important. I mean, here I'll put a picture up here of what a TT convertible um, lower subframe looks like it's got these extra kind of uh, braces on it to actually stiffen up the, the flex in uh, that lower front subframe so having the bushes means that even though you've bolted the bolts up really really tight the bushes are actually loose in the subframe so you're going to get loads of flex in the body putting these on tightens up the front end no end and helps uh, give you kind of some feeling back in the steering as well as all this does as well because obviously this changes the caster these are adjustable here at the end which the standard ones are not because they run a different kind of ball joint but again once i've removed everything off the car i'll go into more detail and you can see them side by side so you can see the comparison all right so as you can see guys taking off the bushes these are the old ones you can see the condition of them they're literally just falling apart they didn't take literally took me maybe what two minutes to take these off a few taps with the hammer and they literally just come off. So basically these are sitting in the subframe, just moving around. Even though the bolt's tight in the middle, the actual bush is actually moving around. So that means that, you know, the chassis at the front is actually flexing in between these two bush bushes when you go around corners and stuff. If I was to do this today, I wouldn't get these. I would probably just make up a sleeve, which was, you know, the same height as this. And then I probably just would have welded a plate onto it on both sides and actually welded it onto the subframe. So let's uh, move forward and get these done. And then also 
Right, so we're here at the car. So just to show you what's involved, basically just uh, put the put the top half in already, and literally that's kind of how it goes. Push the subframe slightly forward. So I can line these up. And that's it, job done. Now that I've started them up, what I like to do actually is have is make sure the subframe is actually all the way forward on both sides evenly when I uh, tighten this up. And hopefully you can see the other end, you can just see the aluminium sticking out, that's done already. So I've measured the distance on the standard wishbone from the center to the center of where the wishbone, where the drop link goes, and it's 230 mil. So I've started to drill a pilot hole. So there you go, it's all done, looking very, very cool. It's all done. So that's the first one done. I can give this a, some paint on this and then uh, crack on doing the other one. So there's no point me showing you guys shipping this down. I've done it a few times on a few cars, Mark 4s as well as Mark 2s and 3s. Here's all the little bits and pieces I've taken off. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this today is actually because what I've had to do is, and I'll show you later on in the video, is I've had to remove the, the steering arms because what happens is, is in the original Mark IV, they bolt in from the top like that onto the hub. Well, I've swapped them around already, but anyway, this one sits that way around. Now they're gonna sit this way around on the TT hub. So you, you've gotta have this shape, as you can see the shape, it kind of curves in. So you need to basically put the left one on the right and the right one on the left. And what I've done is I've actually marked down here on the, and if you can see it 20 on this side, 20 turns, and on the other side it's 22. Even though I've counted the turns, I'm still gonna to need to get the tracking done. Right, so now it's time for the main event, which is what we're all here for, which is the, the difference between the TT hubs and the Mark IV hubs and why we're gonna be using them and also as well as the Mark IV wishbones compared to the TT wishbones. So the main difference already you can see, let's start from the bottom really, is you can see the board joint, it has got actually one, uh, the threads are actually bigger because the original ones are, are, are M8s and these are M10s, so the heavier duty as well as they're actually attached to the board joint. Now moving up is the actual location of where the board joint is compared to the hub. So as you can see the center here, which is where the draft shaft goes through, you've got a, a bit of a distance there. I would say maybe, I don't know, 40 mil. Whereas you can see here, literally it's about maybe five mil. It's literally right on top of the, the outer CV joint. A big difference between this one and this one. What's the benefits of this? Well, the benefits of this is, is actually when you put the car on the ground, what it does is instead of the wishbone being at an angle like so, it will actually, when you, because obviously you've got a lowered car, what happens is the wishbones, instead of being straight, they start to go up. And what this does is, this lowers the wishbone back down again. So you bring back the roll centers and you get back the feeling. Moving along now, the steering arm. The steering arm is also, like I said, uh, on this Mark IV hub, the actual, goes the steering end goes in from the top on the tt one it actually goes from the bottom again the benefit of that is the steering arm is again at a straighter angle instead of being up inclined which obviously promotes a lot of bumps there you hear a little bump and you feel the steering wheel shake in your hand that's why because the, the arm is slightly bent instead of being straight so that does that there as well as as well as being like that is also higher up again because it's actually straight instead of having this curve downwards. So again, a big benefit. So this is the benefit in the hubs. Now we're coming over to the wishbones. So the wishbones are nowadays, there was an early set that actually used smaller bushes here, but those are really hard to find. But anyway, nowadays they have their own uh, bush here. It's not the same as uh, the Mark IV one and the back ones are the same. What I do here is I use Parfex uh, black race ones and I use 
the TT standards uh, once to give me compliance and a bit of uh, less vibration coming through the cabin and still controlled by that. Whereas this one, these ones actually had Powerflex bushes fitted onto them. Again, the biggest difference, this is a cast and that's two bits pressed and spot welded. So this flexes a lot less than that does, believe it or not, they do flex quite a lot. Again, the holes are bigger here. They're M10s compared to M8s to match the, the bore joints, as well as, as you can notice, they're actually slotted. So you can get, I think, a maximum of about 1.5 to 1.2 degrees negative camber by pushing these all the way out, which obviously you don't have the, the, the added benefit of any uh, camber adjustment on the Mark IV setup, whereas on the T2, you can adjust the camber. The camber. Uh, the next thing as well is actually is the caster, is these actually sit forward. Now I'm gonna place one on top of the other and hopefully I can, uh, you can guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I've done is that bolt goes through both there, like so. That lines up there perfectly. And yet, as we kind of come to the front where the bore joint is, you can see the difference. So it's kind of much more forward, as well as obviously it comes out a lot more than, than this. So they, to give you that, obviously, the, um, the camber adjustment, because as you can see, all the way in is actually standard, and then all the way out is that much more to give you the, the adjustment. As well as, as you can see, the bolts don't actually line up. These are more to, to the left, and those are actually more to the right. So what this does is actually pushes the wheel, the caster, pushes it forward towards the front bumper. So it is a beneficial modification, uh, and it, it's surprising what a difference this actually makes to the car, the way the car feels and turning. Unfortunately, it's gonna be hard to, uh, for you guys to, if you've done it before, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, trust me, it's definitely worth doing this modification. It works very, very well. And that means then basically this car I've actually dialed this in. This is going to be a really good handling or as good as it's going to get a wagon. All right, let's get these bits on. Yep, yeah, so I just wanted to retain the original H&R bigger hoop uh, front anti-roll bar. That's why I did this. I mean, you could do it anyway, even if you had the standard anti-roll bar or, or not rated one or something, a white line one. And it's pretty cool. You don't have to use the original style drop link and uh, anti-roll bar because a lot of shocks don't actually have the little lug to go on on there. So that's it then, it's all done literally. Now just put the discs, just put the discs and the calipers back on, put it on the floor and let's go get the tracking done. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. And I can tell you straight off, you know, the improved caster, which move, you know, moves the wheel forward. What that does is it actually gives you a bit more camber every time you turn the steering wheel. So it feels definitely a, a lot more positive a lot less understeer on the front. You feel more confident that like the front's planted. We're going along here at a good 60, 70 miles an hour, 120K. Drop that to third. be a bit careful here because it is a bit sandy but still loads of grip loads of turning there you go a bit wide there pushing a bit too hard still a lot of fun way better than a normal mark 4 and not bad for a, a wagon in the end second gear for this punch it out of here Full throttle all the way down. So what can I say? It's a massive improvement over the original car. Yes, it does, still does understeer. if pushed very, very hard, but the front end just feels so much more connected. If you drive a Mark IV, even like, even on sweeping bends, sometimes you can feel the front end doesn't really want to go. You put a lot of, uh, of input into the steering. Definitely, uh, a lot less input goes into the steering. You feel connected much more, and the front end is, you point in, you can feel like the front end's going where you want it to go. And for a wagon, and this for the size of this car, 
and the weight of this car is definitely a massive improvement. I mean, love it or hate it, the Mark IV, one thing I do like about it is that it has possibilities. You can always improve these cars with so many bits. This car is literally like Lego. You know, you can get bits from the TT, from a say Leon Cupra R, from say Skoda, Octavia, VSR. You know, you can chop and change off the R32. You know, with so many. So that's it, YouTube. We've come to the end of another video. As you've seen, I've literally thrown everything at this car, chassis wise, suspension, bushes, anti-roll bars, everything really to try and get it to handle. And it does handle a lot, lot better. You know, I'm really happy with it. It definitely feels a lot more nicer to drive, a lot more positive. You feel a bit more connected to the road, a lot more steering feel with it. I could change maybe the steering rack off the TT. I think it's got uh, about a turn or three quarters of a turn less. But really in the end, it, it's still not gonna change the way the car performs. And, you know, changing those bits and pieces, like I said, pushing the caster forward. When you, got, when you turn the wheel, it does give a bit more um, camber when you turn the wheel. And actually, I seem to be putting in less input now. And also because of those bushes, maybe on the rear subframe of, you know, the rear bushes on the front subframe, stiffened up the chassis a little bit because it just feel a little bit more, I'm, I'm putting less input to the steering and getting more, more turning or more positive turning anyway. I'm waffling on. See you in the next video where I will be doing actually performance mods on this, where we're gonna start increasing the performance on this with loads and loads of bolt-ons until I actually do uh, the engine conversion. So thanks for watching. Ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling -a -ling. click on that notification bell and keep safe.